Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning. I am still out and about. God gave me a thought last night and I wanted to continue to work it out and sometimes when I do a a video or God prompts me to do a video I can work it out in your presence I don't exactly know what I'm gonna say but uh, I believe God is gonna be speaking I sense that you and I are going to be blessed praise God so I really want to um, work this thing out but first of all there's a scripture I want to start with just to get us on the same page and everything. I want to um, start with this particular scripture, 1 Corinthians 1 27. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confine the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confine the things which are mighty. So God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confine the wise and I was looking up that word foolish uh, in the Strong's it means like things that don't make sense things that appear unto men to be stupid God has chosen those things to confine the wise mean to cause the wise to blush excuse me for a moment this sign keeps popping up okay that will cause the wise to blush or be ashamed maybe of their attitude or what have you and it's like when God gives you something to do that does not make sense and we were kind of speaking about this at the glory zone but he gives you something to do that does not make sense like Jesus having to anoint a blind man with spit and mud and it may be right now you need a miracle and you don't know how you're going to get that miracle. And God may tell you to do something that might appear foolish unto men, but the end result will be the miraculous. That is when we obey him, such as Jesus. He anointed the blind man's eyes with the spit and mud and he got his miracle. Or we look at the children of Israel when uh, Joshua had them they had to go around the walls of Jericho now somebody might say well what sense did that make are uh, we trying to take a city um, shouldn't we just barge on in well God has an order a way of doing things and sometimes it may appear to be foolish unto man but when we take God at his word he may tell you go out each day for seven days and look in your mailbox expecting that check expecting a blessing uh, and for the individual that will obey guess what they'll meet God on one of those days because they obey praise God uh, just in the act of obedience what do you do when God tells you to do things that does not make sense it was a question that he asked us when we were at the glory zone but this morning, I just sense God want to go deeper into that area. Uh, so they were walking around the walls of Jericho. Now, that was something that appeared to be foolish to man. But the end result was the miraculous. Um, when God throws a stick in the water and calls an axe head to float. You know, he calls a prophet to throw a stick in the water. And uh, uh, they were building... Um, house or for them or what have you and um where the prophets came together and they studied or, or what have you but the axe head that was barred fell in the water and he took a stick and threw it in the water and it floated up to the surface now that does not make sense somebody might say i need this i need that but i don't have money praise god you know we find that god does not need money in a sense for the miraculous for miracle or for us to get our needs and um 
so I'm just really working this out in my heart and in my mind before you. And I'm going to come back and study and look and get a greater sense of what God is saying as he opened it up to me. You know, faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So I'm really just having a, a study time. Uh, you might say this is my study page. And I open, the Lord, for some reason, wanted me to open it up so you could hop in, sit down, have a cup of coffee, or what have you. And we could kind of talk this thing over together and everything. Okay, so it's like when you get ready to go shopping, We uh, a lot of times we go into the store. And before you can get what you want, you have to go inside the store. Am I right? Okay. Now sometimes people shop by internet. But still, they have to, even by internet, there's a procedure, and you have to go inside wherever um, it is located at, that we make our purchases online. We have to go inside. Well, I just get a sense that those spiritual blessings that God has given us that are in heavenly places, they are in a realm. They're in a place called there. And if we want them out of there, sometimes we have to do something that may appear to others to be foolish. We may not have the funds to take the city, but God may say, I want you to walk around the walls of Jericho for seven days. I want you on the seventh day to give a mighty shout. All the other days, I simply want you to be quiet. And I want you to kind of line up this way or that way. That's how you're going to take the city. I know you don't have the funds to buy it, but let's go into the realm of the supernatural. Let's go and let's use your heritage because that's your heritage. I've given you the ability to not only operate in the physical dimension, but the kingdom of God is at hand. The city, your home, you are a citizen of that kingdom. So you will use that spiritual dimension to go in and get your stuff. Okay. So I just get a sense that God is speaking. And I know he may not be speaking to everyone, but to someone, praise God, that we're on the same page here. So... What if, okay, somebody might say, well, you know, uh, much of what you're talking about happened in the Old Testament. Okay, and we're going to dwell there for a minute, but we're going to get uh, to Jesus, praise God. We're going to get to the New uh, Testament. But what about when you're fighting a, a, a war and uh, God says, um, send the praisers out, send Judah out first. So you go to the house of the Lord and you encourage to praise and praise and praise. Now, if someone's not careful, they may think, well, I'm just praising to praise God. God is good. And that's all it is to it. But no, no, no. You're going in that praise behind the scene. And God was is dealing in the supernatural realm. He is fighting battles and fighting battles for your families, your loved ones. There's more to that praise than meets the ear or the eye. God is secure in his identity. He knows who he is. I would say really praise is more for our benefit, you know. We're told to put on a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Praise really help us out. Now, somebody might say, well, what sense does it make for me to praise what I need is a pill. Somebody may say, what I need is a drink, you know. Uh, what I need is this and that, just according to where you're at, praise God. But God says to his people, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. It's supernatural, praise God. And when we do that, we find that heaviness cannot stay. It has to lift off. Because we have obeyed God, meaning that we have to go past how we feel and begin to praise God by faith. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Father. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be upon my lips. There's none like you, O oh God. You're awesome in this place. You're altogether lovely. You're beautiful. Father, you are perfection today. Hallelujah. You are the most high. You reign. 
You rule, Jesus. You got all power in your hand, oh God. We bow to you, oh God. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. You are majestic in this place. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are Jehovah Nissi. You are Jehovah Roha. You are Elohim. You are El Elyon. You are the sovereign God. So we begin to praise God. Things begin to go on behind the scene. Remember, we use the scenario when you go shopping, you go to the grocery store. Normally, we'll go on the inside. Well, we're going inside to a place called there, a spiritual dimension, a dimension in the spirit, praise God, where blessings are, uh, where all the things, praise God, and the benefits, bless God, are that God desires to give us. So, somebody may say, well, what about our New Testament? Well, what sense did it make when Paul and Silas were in the prison and uh, they began to sing praises? They began to pray, and at midnight, the Bible said they sung praises to the Lord. And God sent in the earthquake and bust them out of prison. The power of God is still real today. I wonder what would happen on this week if you decided just for the next seven days to give God praise as much as possible. I wonder what would break loose in your life. I wonder what would break loose in my life, praise God, if we began to do that. What would break loose in the lives of our loved ones if we began to, God, I'm going to praise you because they said it couldn't be done. I'm going to praise you. They said I didn't have enough money in the bank to do this thing. God, I don't see no way that we can afford to do this. But what if I chose uh, the, the vehicle of praise, praise God? What if we released Judah out front as Paul and Silas did? Uh, could it be that God still sends earthquakes today, praise God? Uh, somebody knocking on your door with those funds, uh, uh, a shift all of a sudden, and you find yourself uh, the head and not the tail above and not beneath. What if, bless God, uh, somebody said, well, you know, Peter was uh, locked up in jail. And guess what? Here we go again. It's supernatural. Somebody say, you better go get a, a, a good attorney of this. And I'm not saying anything against that. Praise God. But somebody say, let's go pray. We better have a prayer meeting. And I believe they prayed at John Mark's house. Um, they prayed without ceasing. The church prayed, praise God. I wonder what would happen today if the church decide to pray without ceasing that God could unlock some things. I wonder what would happen today, bless God, if the church got together and said, you know, we're just going to pray around the clock until some things break loose. Would a church pray, praise God, and God sent an angel to bust Peter up out of the prison that he was in. And sometimes we can be in a prison of poverty. We can have, be in a prison of not enough. We can be in a prison of other kind of bondages. But the church use the vehicle of prayer. They used the supernatural realm. They went there before they got there, praise God. They went there before they got there. They went to a place in the spirit. They went behind the scenes to shake things up, to break things look, break break things loose, praise God. They went there before they got there. Somebody, you've been thinking about this thing and that. And the Bible says, as a man think of so is he in his heart and out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak of. So it is a good thing, praise God. You remember when they built the Tower of Babel and they were building a building for themselves to bring them glory. And um, they were building it up to the heavens. Well, that was somebody's thought, somebody's idea. And that thing became a reality. Well, what are you dreaming about today? What are you imagining today? Praise God. 
Could it be that the things that we imagine can really take place? Could it be that God has given us that gift of the imagination to work for us and not for the enemy? Praise God. Could it be that God has given you that dream because he wanted it to be a reality, but before it could be a reality, he had to birth a dream through you. He had to birth that house through you. He had to birth that car through you. You had to receive that refrigerator before you got it. Praise God. Mm. I remember when we, um, oh, this was way back in the day, and we, our refrigerator went out on us and everything, and oh God, it was something. And we had got from a neighbor's a friend this great big monster of a refrigerator. It shot out ice like every time you look at it, the ice popped out the. And I was thinking, oh God, I want a refrigerator. God had me to get a vision, and then He had me to have my husband. I asked him, please move that refrigerator out the way, cause God has given us a new one. A lot of times He looked at me like, you know, but. For some reason, he moved it over I, by the back door. We had a space over there. So now we had an empty space for my new refrigerator that I was beginning to see. And I would bring my boys in and I would say, and they would testify. I would say, oh, look at this wonderful refrigerator. Look at, we didn't have money to buy it, you see. So I had to go behind the scene and get it. I had to go and do some shopping in God's spiritual storehouse, in the heavenly places. That's where I had to do my shopping at. So what I did, I looked and all of a sudden, I said, look at the color of it. And a little later, guess what? Someone, and they were not what you call rich or nothing like that, but they got put it in their hearts. I want to buy you a new refrigerator. God put it on somebody's heart, and I knew that God would bless them for being a blessing. And that is how we got the brand new refrigerator that I saw in the spirit, that I dreamed about, praise God. And that is the refrigerator that my children saw when we didn't have funds to get it. When we had this living room suit. I will tell you this, uh, many stories. Oh, my God. And God just remind me today. Oh, I'm so glad I came on here. He reminds me today how I got the things that I got because we didn't have funds back then, you know. And um, so then I used to uh, pride myself on, you know, being able to decorate the living room with this thing and that. And we had this kind of old couch, but I would cover it or this. But one day the spring broke. And it was like God was looking at me and said, well, maybe you'll finally ask me for another one. And so that is exactly what I did. And then I asked my husband, I said, can we empty this living room? I know it won't be in anything, but God is going to get us another one. He'll tell you. My children will tell you. We began to go into that empty living room. And it was so funny. This was before my mother, mother passed. And she would come and she would be embarrassed, you know, because I had just took everything about it. I said, God going to bless us to get another one. We did not have funds. But we went inside the storehouse of God. We went into that spiritual dimension and began to shop. And I began to visualize. And I said, oh, and I'd love this carpet on the floor. And I'd bring my boys, my two boys. And they would look. And I said, look at here and look at that. And lo and behold, guess what? God touched someone else's heart and um, blessed us. And then somehow God gave us some funds also. And uh, in two weeks, we had paid a payment on uh, this particular uh, living room set. And um, somehow or another, the monies came for us to pay it off. Within two weeks, we had this. And we probably confessed it maybe not that long. I don't know if it was even a month, praise God. Because my mom, she was worried. That, she said, what if some of the saints come over and they see, you know, it empty, you know. But I was trusting God for that new set. And guess what? God provided. Same thing happened with our automobiles year after year when uh, different things would happen. That's how we got it. We confessed it. We didn't have the funds, you know. I bless God. God has increased us in many areas and everything. But I tell you, it works, praise God. 
God will take the foolish things to confine the wise. So whatever he's telling you to do, and you know it's God, and it may not make sense, but I will do it. It may be that Sunday he might have you just walk around the church. Somebody might think, well, what's going on? They don't know that you're walking out of the old into the new. They don't know that you're running through a door of opportunity that just opened up and you're running. They don't know that you're shopping in the realm of the spirit. Praise God. Amen. Somebody said, well, you know, I, I can't get this done. I can't get that done. They don't know that you're walking over to that property and you're just looking and you're just saying, oh, well, look at that and look at that. And things are going on behind the scene in the realm of the spirit. Praise God. And I am excited about the movings of God. So, you know what? I am getting ready to get out of here. But Father, we just thank and praise you for my friend. Oh, Father God, that they stop by to chat with us, oh God. And Lord, we pray, Father God, that what you've spoken, oh Father God, will get off on them, Lord God. We pray that you release an impartation into their lives, oh Father God. That, Lord, they will take what you give them and they will run with it, Father. That they will see the fruit, they will see the manifestation, they will see the demonstration of your power, God. And, Lord, we thank you for stirring us up today, reminding us, oh Father God, what you can do. That you still take the foolish things to confine the wise. And when we're obedient and and do what you tell us to do, oh Father God. We have the manifestations, Father. We bless you, Father, that you're the same God yesterday, today, and forever. That you're still going about doing good, healing all that are oppressed of the enemy. Well, we bless our God. And you know, that just reminds me, when we were sick, we walked around hurting, we hurt our ankle, and we just said, thank you, God, I'm healed. Thank you, God, I'm healed. Calling those things that be not as though they were. And I stepped down, I feel the pain, but one morning I got up. My mind had been renewed. No pain, all gone, simply because we allow God to bless us, to take the foolish things and confine the wise. Praise God. Amen. So God bless you. Have a great, wonderful day awesome day in his presence. I am out of here.